Well, as far back as I can remember, I was a creator. I made things. I painted things. I built things. Um, earlier in my life, I was a, um, a builder of houses, so I built houses for a living. And so when I, uh, ex I was exposed to jewelry making uh, by uh, my, my ex-wife and this guy named Kostas, this old Greek man, um, and I wanted a chance to just see if I can do it, because I, I thought I could. So as soon as I got access to his studio, I, first day I made like a ring from scratch. And so I realized that making jewelry was one way an artist could actually make money to support other art forms. What I love most about jewelry making uh, is actually interacting with different people every day, meeting new people. You know, a really great day for me could be a great interaction with three potential customers as opposed to uh, a day where I get a really great sale, but it wasn't a great experience with the customer. So uh, the interaction between cu customers is what kind of fuels my creative fire. Um, not knowing what I'm going to make is really exciting. Um, the actual process of making the thing is, is pretty cool. Um, but mostly I found it's inter the interaction between uh, me and the customer. I, I almost feel like that's actually what they're hiring me for. Uh, once I realized I could make jewelry, I started to look at schools. So I researched some, and there aren't many schools that specialize in jewelry making. Um, there are famous ones like GIA and Paul Revere Academy. Um, what I found was a, a not so well-known, uh, mostly Korean-American run jewelry school near downtown called the uh, Jewelry Arts and Design College. It's now called Calstone University. So I went in there, and they not only needed Amer uh, American students, um, they allowed me to sort of work, like, work in the school while paying off my tuition. If you were a 16-year-old and you thought you might take an interest in jewelry making, um, I would ask as many questions as possible. Uh, one, can you donate, how much time can you donate to this craft? Because if it's not pretty much all of your time, then jewelry is probably not going to be the thing for you to be doing day to day. However, if you learn the craft and understand it, you can become a designer that oversees other technicians. So the difference between like, you know, when a 16 year old, if I was 16 again, I would learn this distinction, uh, a technician, a visionary, or a manager. Um, I'm a little bit of uh, all three combined, uh, but someone might be a technician. So in the jewelry world, if they're like, you know what, I wanna learn how to set stones, because I could be really good at that and I'll get hired. They should be prepared to set stones. You know, that's a technician. If they get into creative world, the creative world, they're going to get bored of setting stones and they're gonna have gone through school and learned all these things and realized that uh, the activity of doing these things is not necessarily what they want. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of like if a, if a 16 year old asked me uh, about, you know, whether they loved baking, right? And they were like, I wanna be a baker in a bakery. Uh, I would say, first of all, do you know the difference between being uh, baking and running a bakery? Because that's the common misconception, is that being good at one thing or liking what, doing this one thing is the same as running a business doing that thing. Because as soon as a business opens, it's, it's not the same. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.